Battleground Canada polls now. Some new horse race numbers now. And this poll is from the firm Ecos Research. That's Frank Graves' shop. It's a mixed online and phone poll, decent sized sample. And our pollster, David Coletto of Abacus Data, is staying here with us to walk us through the top line results from Frank's poll. What, what's yeah, he got? What's interesting is, is it's similar to the numbers we, we, we talked about a, about a week ago here mm -hmm. that we released. Um, it shows that the Liberals have a small but uh, a small lead over the Conservatives among all respondents uh, who are committed. Uh, you can see there 33% uh, for the Liberals, 30% for the Conservatives, 24 for the New Democrats. What's interesting is they also released likely voters, like we did when we uh, looked in, at the polling in Nova Scotia. And it shows almost a flip of that top number. The Conservatives actually jump ahead when you look at those likely voters, and the NDP numbers improve slightly. So it's a much tighter race um, between the three parties in that likely voter model but depending on who actually turns out and what that electorate looks, mm -hmm. it show, these, this number suggests why turnout's so important because two different worlds could, could, could emerge if the election were held today. We, with we know that it's never the case that all of those polled will all turn out to vote. And this is one of the reasons why, in this case, ECOS and why you guys have right. taken this model. How do you model likely voters? Everybody's got different approaches, but you end up with some different results. You do. And uh, like we don't do that now because an election's almost 20 months away. Sure. And so, I, identifying that likely voter becomes very difficult. The model they use is by weighting by past vote, which is which is okay if you assume that that electorate's going to look the same from one election to the next. I don't think that's a fair way to, to look at it, but you can't do it any other way right now because people aren't thinking about how excited they are about politics or whether they're sure. going to vote. So uh, Let's go uh, political consultant Michael Diamond is in Toronto now. And Michael, you've had a chance to look over what uh, the folks at Ecos had. I think it's interesting in this sense, uh, you know, whatever you might say about, you know, who would win if there was an election, it's the kinds of people that are now deciding to move their elections around. And I took some interest that Ecos found that the Conservatives traditionally have drawn support from older voters and from male voters. But over the last year, with all the Senate scandal, they'd lost a lot of those voters, but now those guys are coming back. And that's got to be heartening if you're a conservative. Oh, exactly. You know, they're, they're moving back to uh, their traditional home over the last uh, couple of election cycles. So definitely some uh, reason for uh, Trudeau and the Liberals to be concerned over this. And, uh, you know, it's just suggesting that, you know, the Senate and uh, all these other things are just less and less top of mind to voters. Uh, the, the Senate, if again, just thinking, we're going to talk about liberals in a second, but just thinking as a conservative, uh, you've got to be thrilled if three in ten voters are still ready to cast a ballot beside your name after what has been a pretty lousy year for them. It's not been good. Uh, and uh, you ask conservative MPs here that, they'll tell you it's been pretty rough. They're getting, getting beat up at home. But still, they're in a pretty good spot midterm. Definitely, you know, a very, very good, uh, a high floor level. And uh, uh, as we move further and further from the last year, which was just one of the most brutal years you could imagine in uh, Canadian federal politics recently, uh, just uh, things should get better. Now, I want to talk a little about the Liberals. And David and I were just talking off camera about this during the break. Uh, it, there's no question that Justin Trudeau has brought an extra X factor to his party. Uh, take a look at the number of donors to the party in the last year exceeding the Conservatives. They got a lot of excitement. Presumably that excitement is going to translate into higher turnout. And we might also assume, this goes to David's comments about modeling uh, likely voters, we can assume that in the last election, I bet a lot of Liberals stayed home. You know, the last two elections. Last think, two elections, you know? sure. Uh, it was just, uh, how could a Liberal have been excited about Michael Ignatieff? Uh, you know, a, a soft Liberal voter. Uh, voter turnout, you know, hasn't been uh, as high as we'd like, obviously, for the last uh, uh, dec decade. So uh, it's uh, Justin Trudeau's uh, opportunity here is can he do uh, in the next federal election what Barack Obama did in the Iowa caucus? when he beat Hillary Clinton, can he change the, uh, the face of the electorate? Well, and, and that's a good point, because we have seen in the last four or five elections that the, elect, the, the, the basic demographics of the electorate has basically been the same. It's older. You're older, you're more likely to vote. And if you're older, you're more likely to vote and vote conservative. If Trudeau's promise, and you've heard this from every one of his backers, he's going to attract young people. It's a big thing, because we haven't seen young people increase in voter turnout for the last decade, but if he can get one or two percent more young people, and presumably they go to him, that could be a big advantage. Oh, absolutely. You know, there was a, a lot of those ridings that uh, the Liberals lost in 2011, very, very close margins. If he can uh, get that extra edge, that's going to bring home a lot of the seats that uh, not only were lost by uh, Ignatieff, but Dion, and even heading back to where Paul Martin took over. 
let's quickly think about the Democrats. Um, you know, one in four, historically, that's pretty good in between elections. But, of course, do Democrats want much, much more than that next time around? Do you see a path where they can eat into somebody's support? Well, you know, it's got to be tough to be uh, Tom O'Clair right now. He was performing. He was the guy who was uh, performing best in the House, uh, keeping the, taking the Prime Minister to task. And to not be able to translate that into a polling lead is, you know, where, where does he turn next? Uh, definitely uh, good news for them. It looked like they were holding some of their Quebec surge from the last election, so that's good. But uh, uh, how they grow is a million-dollar question. Michael Diamond in Toronto tonight. Thank you so much, Michael. Appreciate it. Thank you.